Welcome to chapter two. In chapter one, we talked about movement, light, and hydration to start your day off perfectly. Don't forget to check out that video. And in this video, we're going over chapter two. Which is breathing and cold water exposure. The Wim Hof method was developed by Wim Hof himself. His nickname, the Iceman, is for his ability to withstand extreme cold. He has climbed Everest and Kilimanjaro in only shorts and shoes, can stay comfortable in an ice bath for hours, and hasn't been sick in over a decade. He's dared to tap the potential we all have inside by exposing his body to the resistance of extreme natural stressors so that he may grow stronger. He's not a superhuman. He has no rare genes or superpowers. He differs from most of us only in that we have shied away from exposure to acute stress in difficult conditions. We live in air-conditioned houses, travel to work in cars, sit inside our offices all day, have our food delivered to us, and despite having zero exposure to dirt or the outdoors, we have warm showers to clean us at the end of the day. Well, I mean, we used to. Our lives are pretty different now. Back in the day, the human species lived as hunter-gatherers, dealing with the stressors of staying alive. We walked barefoot, foraged and hunted for our food, and occasionally stumbled upon a bear in the woods. This initiated a fight-or-flight response, temporarily shutting down all inessential systems of the body, allocating the leftover energy to quick thinking and body movement. <laughs> the trouble with our modern, hyper-stressed lifestyle is that the body can't distinguish between physical threats and psychosocial threats. It's releasing the same stress hormones when you check your bank account or lose your job as it does when our lives are actually threatened. There are so many societally manifested stressors that as a collective whole, we are now living in chronic stress. Our body never leaves its physical state of fight or flight. Chapter two goes into ways that we can change this by incorporating breathing and cold exposure to our lives, intentionally dosing ourselves with some acute stress. But why make more stress if we're chronically overloaded? Aubrey mentions a term called hormesis, a biological phenomenon in which low-dose exposure to an environmental agent produces a beneficial effect, while a higher-dose exposure produces a toxic effect. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Hormesis is implemented in the use of vaccines. By injecting a weakened version of the virus, the body adapts to the stress, develops antibodies, and becomes immune to the full-fledged exposure of that same virus. Acute stress will produce similar results. Baron and I have been exposing ourselves to cold very routinely over the last year. Baron especially, by rinsing off in the snow melt of Colorado's rivers, walking barefoot in the snow, sleeping and cooking and changing our clothes and temps down to the single digits. Some of the exposure is deliberate, some is not. What helps us work through these situations is our breath. The Wim Hof breathing technique is effective like pranayama and yogic breathing in its ability to slow down your body, calm mental chaos, and reduces stress. Breath something we unconsciously do all day long, but the change comes when we breathe with awareness. We found several practices which benefit from and cultivate breath control. While climbing hard routes, our natural tendency is to tense up and hold our breath to stay tight. Continuous controlled breathing keeps the body oxygenated and allows us to keep climbing. My favorite advice to fellow climbers is don't forget to breathe. The same goes for slacklining. I like to keep a nice rhythmic breathing pattern to maintain physical and mental focus. These breathing practices are applicable to many facets of life. This is the Wim Hof Method. Step one, 30 to 50 power breaths. Step two, the hold. At the end of the 30 to 50 breaths, breathe out all of your air and hold it as long as you can until you naturally grasp for air. Now let's use it in the first prescription, the power shower. Step one, turn the shower to hot and wash like normal. Step two, use the Wim Hof breathing method while still under warm water. Step three, turn the shower as cold as it will go. Step four, continue Wim Hof breaths until breathing calms. Step five, hold at the bottom of the breath until that gasp reflex kicks in. Total cold exposure should equal about three minutes for maximum effects. Practice, practice, practice. We don't often have access to standard showers, and when we do, they're paid for, and water is limited to a timer. We have a bag that will hang for a slow trickling outdoor shower, but water is still extremely limited, so the next technique comes a little easier to us using streams and rivers we park next to. The second prescription is the polar plunge. First, do your Wim Hof breathing. 
Step one, prepare an ice bath or jump in water as cold as you can find. Set a timer for two minutes. Step two, continue Wim Hof breathing until you can breathe calmly and normally. Remember, the cold will make you want to gasp for air. Step three, exhale fully and hold your breath at the bottom. Step four, submerge completely if you have a lot of experience or a buddy nearby. Step five, get out of the water at the end of two minutes and dance. <laughs> These methods to calm our minds through breath and the training of our mental stamina with cold exposure have been a huge aid as we've learned to live off-grid. I feel good. My hands, at like breath 20, started sort of tingling. And on my out breath, I could feel like tingling in my belly and chest. And now I feel pretty exhilarated. If you have experience or give these methods a shot, let us know how it goes. We'll talk to you guys in the comments and see you in chapter three.